The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 830 AM Wednesday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And we got markets right now in positive territory. We're right back in the middle of the trading range we had on yesterday. S&P's up by 11 points, trading at 32.24. Got the NASDAQ up 72 at 10,612. Dow up 59 points, trading 26,356. Quite a night for gold as well, up about $6, reaching 19.77. Putting that on some context, that's a new high for gold. Make a print, quite an acceleration. You put things on a 15 minute in gold. Talk about reclaiming the entire $75 run we had from early Monday night, that is, to the lows early, early Tuesday and quite a charge back from 1900 on the dot. We're currently trading 1970 in the price of gold. Crew contract 41.43, up on 39 cents on the session. We get inventory numbers for crude 1030 AM, two hours from right now. Tom and I will be on the air for those. Notes and bonds. Pretty flat action right now. You got the 10 year up one tick, 139.23. We reached a low early yesterday at 139.08. We're kind of just settling back into the area we've been comfortable with. And there's your action. There's the bar I've drawn. Couple highs to date 139.22, 139.21, 139.22. And we're dealing with highs over the last couple of days within basically one to two ticks of that price level. And we're right back at 139.25. All right. Jumping around to what else we have happening this morning, we got a lot of earnings we'll jump through. Boeing will start it off with a little bit higher on their numbers. There's your volatility. Boeing closed yesterday at 170.84. We're currently trading at 172.85. Pulling up their numbers to start things off, reporting a net loss of 2.4 billion. They slow aircraft production amid the coronavirus weakened demand. In addition to its grounded 737 MAX, demand has also slipped for Boeing's higher priced 787 Dreamliners. So they have their conference call two hours from right now at 10.30 in the morning. Loss per share, 479. The market was looking for 254. Revenue, quite a miss as well, 11.8 versus 13.16. Uh, revenue fell 25%, 11.81 from 15.75. Remarkable that Boeing still took in $12 billion almost when you think about what's going on, the problems they're having with the 737 Maxes and no airlines flying. But uh, they're set to detail the impact. Boeing has more than 470 planes sitting on the ground that haven't been delivered to customers, most of them that 737 MAX, quite an inventory they're dealing with. There's the action on Boeing this morning, up a bit on their earnings. All right, before we go through, we got GE, GM, Spotify, Starbucks. But before that, we are looking for, where are we? There we are, Mr. Powell. So Fed Day concluding today, out with a statement, all but expected to stay the course, but it'll be really looking for what they're going to be doing in the future, future guidance and what they're going to have to say. Uh, wind down the two-day meeting at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Statement followed by a press conference by Jerome Powell. I believe that starts at 2.30. So I imagine the market going to calm down right as we get towards that, whether it's 12, 1 o'clock at least, as we wait for Powell to come out on what they are going to do in the future and how they're prepared to deal with an economy. Um, that is not quite back to anywhere near pre-COVID levels. Okay, getting back into earnings. General Electric, shares are higher after second quarter revenue slightly better than expected. Revenue, 17.7 billion for GE. They were looking for 17.1. Loss per share though, 15%, excuse me, 15 cent per share loss. The market was looking for 10. GE shares on that action. There's your pop from 690 almost, 689 to 720, currently trading at about 703. Their conference call began at 8 a.m. Eastern time. All right, GM out with their numbers as well. Before we jump to the numbers, trading higher to 2744 from 2633. Jumping back to GM numbers. 
$800 million loss. They're trading higher on these numbers, folks, but this is the world we're living in. Uh, U.S. vehicle sales fell 34% from a year ago, lost about $800 million and burned through billions of dollars in cash in the second quarter. Uh, let's see. So 34% drop in U.S. vehicle sales. They had made $2.42 billion during the same three months last year. Company burned through about $8 billion in cash during the quarter. My goodness, a number that analysts and investors are closely tracking. Yeah, they better be. Uh, it expects to spend between seven and $9 billion in the second quarter. That's quite a number. You're talking about $17 billion over 180 days. Uh, GM, positive on that news. But for some context, as I like to say, from 35 to 14, I mean, we're going to open at 27. We were trading at 30 before the world knew of COVID and what it was going to do to the economies. And you're talking about a country that just burned, uh, country, company that just burned through $17 billion in 180 days. And now uh, you go from 35 just to 26, 27. But let's jump over to Tesla from the car companies. Tesla trading higher today at about 1,500. There you see the recent volatility it's had, putting it on a shorter time frame for Tesla. 14.99 currently up a bit for Tesla shares this morning. Okay, what else we have going on before we continue with the earnings? Big day for the tech sector as you have Facebook, Google, Apple, and Amazon. They are all in front of Congress. We'll see how that happens in terms of what they have to say and the questions that they face. Cool story out here for Kodak shareholders. Uh, so Trump announces a deal to manufacture generic drug ingredients. This chart, folks, wait till we jump over to it. Uh, Eastman Kodak soared on Tuesday after Trump announced a deal to work with the photography pioneer to produce ingredients and generic drugs in response to the coronavirus. The U.S. government awarded the company $765 million loan to start producing drug ingredients under the Defense Production Act, the first of its kind. 33rd use of the Defense Production Act will mobilize Kodak to make generic active pharmaceutical ingredients, Trump said in a press conference Tuesday evening. We will bring back our jobs and we will make America the world's premier medical manufacturer and supplier. Kodak said on Tuesday it will produce pharmaceutical components that have been identified as essential but have lapsed into chronic national shortage as defined by the FDA. All right, I think it's EK, is that symbol? Let's see. Uh, K-O-D-K. Maybe Eason sent the road. There you go. Uh, look at this acceleration, right? So you go from Monday night, you trade in the range of between eight and 12 yesterday, and you're gonna open, you close at eight, and you're gonna open almost 100% higher at this point, even from the close yesterday, currently trading right at around 15 for Eastman Kodak. Talk about a reversal of fortunes, uh, a lot of reversal of fortunes going on. I mean, this is going back the year, you really gotta stretch things back. Look at this, right, from 37 in 2014 to $1.50 in March of this year, and you're gonna open back at $15, back in this level you were trading at between about 2016. Remarkable action. All right, let's jump back to the markets. We'll check out the VIX this morning. We get the S&Ps up about nine points. VIX trading 24.98, made it as low as 24 yesterday. And checking in on gold as we get ready for this first break. Gold holding steady about 1970 this morning. Stay tuned, folks. We come back from the break, see what else we have on tap for Wednesday trading. Uh, big day of earnings tomorrow as well. We'll take a look at some of those companies and uh, we'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P is positive by eight. We got the NASDAQ positive by 47, the Dow positive by 39, and we got Shopify positive by more than $100. Not bad, folks. All-time highs for Shopify this morning, charging higher on pretty dramatic numbers. We'll get into them in a moment. We closed yesterday at 985. The bid ask, 1,093 by 1,094, and it's just climbing the conference call beginning when we came on the air at 8.30 a.m., and it's already up almost $20 from when they began, so things seem to be going well on that call. In terms of what they're talking about, shares jump after they report a revenue increase of 97%. So check out these numbers. The uptick in demand for e-commerce platforms accrued to Shopify in the second quarter. Second quarter revenue rose 97% to $714 million from a year earlier. The estimate was only for $513 million. Percentage-wise, staggering. You almost can't overstate how big of a beat that is when you're only supposed to take in basically half a billion dollars and you take in almost three quarters of a billion dollars. Uh, you got their CFO, of course, out there touting the value proposition on full display in our second quarter. And we use Shopify. It is a great platform for TFNN, so you can understand. It's remarkable, the acceleration, though, right at the right time. They make things as easy as pop possible. People moving online to service their business. Um, and this stock, I mean, for some con, we were down at almost $300 in Shopify originally. You go from about 600 pre-COVID down to a low of, let's find out exactly, 305. And we're going to open, I mean, it's almost going to be a four-bagger pretty soon at 1,200 from the lows in Shopify. Currently, like I said, the all-time high right now, 1,074. And we're about $20 above that level, climbing towards 1,100. I mean, even look at, look at since I pulled it up, this thing is accelerating, folks, 1,100 for Shopify. All right, what else we got going on? 
Uh, getting back into earnings, Spotify paid subscribers hit 138 million as streaming demand rebounds. So Spotify in the news recently, right? They paid for that Joe Rogan podcast, possibly $100 million a year, getting him more into the podcast business. Out uh, with their numbers, pretty good numbers, 138 million. Premium subscribers, which account for most of the company's revenue, up 27% from a year earlier. Analysts were looking for 136.4, so they beat that by about 1.6 million, and revenue was 13% to 2.22 billion US dollars for the three months. Not a bad deal, taking in 2.2 billion dollars in 90 days. And Spotify, there's your action on Spotify, though. Man, oh man. So uh, talk about price for perfection from 268. We're down to 256. The conference call beginning at eight in the morning, but they did not like those numbers. And uh, yeah, there's there's more buried in there. It's always about the forecast. Possibly. What, what are you going to do for me the next three, six months, et cetera? OK, jump it over to Starbucks. Shares higher as investors shrug off the coffee chain's loss and hope worst of the pandemic is behind it is the quote. They come in with an adjusted loss of 46 cents for the fiscal third quarter. The, customi the company estimated that it lost $3.1 billion in revenue due to the coronavirus. They opened 130 net new locations globally. I mean, that's pretty remarkable to be opening 130 new locations across the globe as this is going on. Jumping over to Starbucks shares to see where we're at this morning. There's your pop higher from 74 up to 80, sitting at 74.48. That's quite a pop for this company. Uh, last night with their numbers, for some context, again, from basically about 90, uh, even as I back this out, Starbucks, one of the companies, they were hit early on because of their exposure and their business in China. So you're looking at this probably in January, as things were shutting down in China, not quite sure that we were going to have to face the same uh, consequences. Of course, we did. But this is where you saw the pain begin, really, for Starbucks. We were trading about 93. You deal with some volatility. Then the U.S. markets fall out of bed. So we're dealing with 90, down to 50. We're going to open this morning at about 78. And again, that's right where we are. Even in early June, when the market had that run, you had Starbucks as high as 83.62, actually. Now you're dealing with stuff, though. Um, I'm seeing headlines out there. You know, Hong Kong may have a, a break, an outbreak of this going on. So it's something that's very fluid. And maybe maybe there's some fear in here that it could creep back into the Asian markets, which they are exceptionally exposed to. So getting into it, loss per share, 46 cents. Market was looking for 59, revenue 4.22, market was looking for 4.07, fiscal third quarter net loss 678 million, down from 1.37 billion a year earlier for their income. Cost related to the pandemic, paid leave, uh, safety measures, all of that. Net sales dropped 38%. So there's your number. Global same store sales plummeted 40% during the quarter. Uh, but consumers spent more on their orders, sending the average check up by 23%. Amazing how these trends are changing. Um, winners and losers, same-store sales fell 40% in the quarter. I was looking for if they said something about you know how they've, how they've recovered in terms of June. In China, Starbucks' second largest market, same-store sales declines less steep, falling only 19%, and 12% of the orders were for deliveries. Okay, jumping around to other stories out there for earnings. You got Barclays out there, post profit slide. They set aside 1.6 billion pounds for their related loan losses. Deutsche Bank out with their numbers. Earnings beat as restructuring continues amid the pandemic. So they uh, net loss attributed to shareholders 77 million euros for the second quarter, beating the expectations. Let's see how they're trading this morning for whoops. There we go, DB. And we're going to be a bit lower. Let me get into the. There's your action. Uh, is that Deutsche Bank? Yes, it is. 901 so far this morning. All right, let's pull up some of these tech stocks. They're going to be in front of Washington. We got Amazon shares. Uh, ain't no thing. Up about $35 as they prepare to be in front of Congress. Zuckerberg, Facebook, positive as well with the market. S&Ps are up about 10, so you got Facebook up about $1.30 ahead of that number. Google shares, Alphabet, 1511 from 1500 on the dot last night. And of course, whoops, Apple, AAPL, 375.57, some volatility recently for Apple, some context. Look at that drop off from 399 
to a low of 356, currently trading 373 right now on Apple. All right, let's jump over to oil. Oil, we got our crew numbers, 10.30 a.m. Pretty interesting where this is settled out, right? I have this marked on the chart. This was where oil really fell out of bed. We had coronavirus fears already rocking. We're dealing with March 6th here, the date. Saudi Arabia comes out dramatically, starts a price war, cuts things overnight to a dramatic price tag. You have oil go from March 6th, trading at 46, to March 9th, trading at 27. The low of that March 6th date, 41.05 on that date. And we've just been very, very comfortable hovering right around these levels. Actually made it to a high of 42.51 on the 21st, that's eight days ago, and made it to a high of 42.36 on the 23rd. So that's talking about six days ago, uh, currently trading about 41.35 with crude numbers expected to come out about an hour and a half from right now on the air. Okay, jumping over to two, the front page of TFNN. This is the final week, folks. I started my newsletter report, Rocket Equities and Options. I encourage you to check it out. You can save 50% on the first month. Folks, lock in the price, save 50%, use the pro promo code ROCKET. If you don't like it, enjoy the 30 days, cancel it. You can get a 30-day money-back guarantee. All the details right on the front page of TFNN. And that's the last week because this is the last week of July. We're going to wrap up those monthly numbers. We're going to wrap up uh, monthly trading. We're going to be in August trading come Monday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes to go over what else we have on tap for Wednesday trading. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. Checking in on some coronavirus numbers. Tough day for deaths yesterday in some of the hardest hit states. I talked about yesterday in the program that you may actually see some downtrends in the averages in some of the hardest hit states. Deaths, unfortunately, lagging the spikes that we had in cases. So you're seeing some of those spikes happening in those states, jumping down to Florida. Florida, as I mentioned, cases, you like to see the decrease in cases, but we're seeing record deaths. 186, 186 recorded yesterday. As that number lagging, we actually peaked out in cases for the average at about July 17th, peaked out in cases for the raw number. You're talking about that day when we had about 15,000. Uh, July 12th, so we're dealing with, we're about 17 days past that 15,000 day mark in July. But Jen, jumping into the numbers, so Florida, California, Texas, all reported record high averages. California, 185 new deaths, pushing the average up to 113. Florida, the 186 I just referenced, we're now dealing with 130 on the average, and Texas reported 200 new. Again, hopefully we get over that hump. We have decreasing cases, people wear masks, social distancing, and we bring down some of these stark numbers in some of the states going on right now. Okay, jumping back to the markets as we get ready for this open. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Larry Pezzavento back in the saddle. He's coming up live next. Right now, the S&P is trading at 32.21, checking back in on that gold contract, inching a little bit higher, 1974 right now, putting that on a five-minute chart. You see a little bit of a pop even in the last since 825 this morning. We were trading at 1967, gold now trading at 1974. Checking in on silver, quite the fall off yesterday in silver, and we've just settled back at about 2450 in the price of silver this morning. Notes and bonds, as I mentioned, pretty calm action. The 10-year comfortable right at around 129.24 this morning, and that 30-year currently trading at 181.18, up about four ticks on the session. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Larry Pesavento coming up live next. It's Fed Day, live programming all day. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. Fast Market at 11 o'clock. Basil Chapman at noon. Steve Rhodes at 1. Dave White at 2. Fed announcement at 2. That should be an interesting afternoon. And Tom O'Brien, my dad, rounds it out from 3 till 4. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up live next. We'll be right back. <laughs>